Hi, Tim. You all hey, right? Beth, great to see yeah, you. Yeah, you too. You okay? I'm really looking forward to this. Should we go and get started? Yeah, let's go. Beth, great to be here with you for this episode of Recognised Game. Obviously, there was really only one choice. Group stage, match day one, away at Lyon. I spoke to you after the game and I remember you saying that Arsenal felt quite relaxed going into the game because they were the underdogs. Can you perhaps just take us through a little bit? Like you said, underdogs, so sometimes that takes the pressure away from you. I think people don't have an expectation of you to do well. We know it quietly that we're a very good team. It depends on the day whether we decide to turn up as that very good team. and. In this game, we did. I was up in the press box in quite an elevated position, as you can see. Yeah. I was amazed at the amount of space so, that Leon yeah. were leaving. Is that how you felt on the pitch, um, particularly in those early minutes of the game? Because I've do, I do individually have done quite well in the Euros, that teams actually were trying to stop our right side a little bit more, which Caitlin was like rubbing her hands, you know, like Caitlin's an unbelievable player and yeah, Leon play quite a high line and they leave quite a bit of space in behind so yeah it worked perfectly for us in this game. And that takes us nicely on to the first goal um, of course which Caitlin scores. We're working on being patient and then obviously try to move their midfield out who were quite compact throughout the game. Obviously Kim pops out in this instance and I think that gives them an uncertainty of what to do with Kim as they're very used to marking within the pitch. And you mentioned Kim there when you've got a player like Kim Little behind you does that encourage you to make this kind of run? She tried to look the first time, it didn't quite come off and then obviously luckily I managed to keep my run on side and open up the space and like I think me and Caitlin actually spoke about that this morning. She always makes them runs because she knows I'll play that blind pass regardless and it's something as wingers that we've prided ourselves to get in the box and be a nuisance and in that sense I didn't look and Caitlin was there. Yeah and of course here you see like yeah. no look. K yeah Caitlin's out, she, if she's not there I'm telling her off so yeah. she knows to be yeah. there. When she plays with a player like, say, Kate, who's currently being on the right wing a bit more left footed, she kind of keeps her run a bit more delayed because Kate wants to come in to then play the ball. So it's that connection in, uh, between players that yeah, causes them types of goals. Arsenal's third goal of the game here. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, whenever Arsenal have a free kick from this range, there'll be a conversation mm -hmm. because Steph, Catley, and Katie McKay will be interested yes. as well. You win the argument here. Uh -huh. How do you do that? <laughs> I actually often don't. I think I'm too nice in some cases and Katie wants to take every single free kick but I think in relation to where the ball is, I think if you're a clever footballer you know which person should be taking it and at this point I had a lot of confidence in my game, I was doing really well so I've been working a lot on my free kicks and assessing what they do and I think in this case it worked out perfectly for how they set up to what I wanted to do. And did you know exactly how you were going to strike it when you spot the ball up or do you wait? I wait till they have kind of got in position, see where the keepers are and I think where she is at the moment, she's not in a great position to see so she has to step one way or the other and I think in this instant she starts to step the other way. And then we see the conversation between uh, yourself, Steph and Katie afterwards. Do you remember what was said in that moment? Yeah. They said you got it right this time, they said that to me but we obviously hooked each other because we always have such a discussion over it sometimes and I think it when it's in feeling how you feel in a football match, sometimes you've got to step forward and just take that opportunity and yeah I felt good in this game so far, I was already had an assist and we were feeling quite comfortable within the game so that gives you confidence in itself. This is the fifth goal on the night. I mean, did you sense disorganisation in them at this point or do you think it was more mental than I that? I think their performance started going a bit rogue. They didn't know what to do, so their patterns then became all over. I know their fullbacks like to get forward and that yeah. works perfect for me. Obviously, Selma Basher is a great player, but it was a nice little battle that we had. But like I said earlier, we're quite relentless in how we were pressing and winning the ball high. And there's an instance they make a mistake, but we're so high up the pitch that she's not getting back. She's wrong side of me. And I had so much confidence within that point that I didn't think I was going to miss that chance. You just get good contact on it and yeah, they were very much out of position and we were well on our way and as you can tell I was still super excited at 5-1 to score another goal. <laughs> another bit I want to highlight, this is in stoppage time, it's 5-1. What on earth are you doing throwing yourself <laughs> at shots on the edge of the Arsenal area when we're 5-1 up? I was enjoying myself in this game so much that 
like I, that block at that point felt as good as scoring one of the goals. I pride myself on being very good going forward, but I like to be strong defensively, and for me to do that for my team, it's part and parcel of the job, but I actually really enjoyed that block at the time. What was the kind of feeling in the dressing room afterwards? Let's say enjoyed the moment. I think it's very important in football to enjoy moments like that was a big win, that was a big shock, and like you said, against the holders who have dominated the Champions League for so long, and we've kind of just schooled them to a certain extent in this game, and yeah, I think the girls were quite surprised, but yeah, we enjoyed it very much. Well, Beth, I don't think that's going to be the last time I rewatch this game. Uh, that was an incredible insight into the kind of the tactics, the execution of playing a game like this in the Champions League. Thanks very much, I really enjoyed that. No, you're very welcome, me too.